Hey, what's going on guys? Dylan DeJesus here. Thank you so much for joining us for another video. Today, we'll be reviewing all of your entries from the DCF Heritage Contest. This is actually our fifth contest as we've already previously hosted a horror themed one, a Christmas themed one, a floral themed one, and a video game themed contest previously. But this one features our largest grand prize yet as we'll be giving away $500 total to the winner of the contest, a $350 gift card to AngelusDirect.com, and a $150 gift card to DeJesusInc.com. Now, the way that we run all of our contests is once all of the submissions are sent in, we review every single pair based on a multitude of factors, and then we narrow it down to what we believe are the top four entries from the entire field of submissions. Those four pairs are then sent into us for a physical review on an upcoming episode of Reviewing Your Customs, and then you, the public, vote on the winner of who will be receiving the grand prize. But for today's video, we'll be reviewing all of the other entries from the contest that are just outside of the top four, but believe me, there are some absolutely incredible ones featured today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So first up, we have Third World Customs representing Japanese heritage with a pair of Last Samurai Nike Blazers. Now the entire upper of these is decked out with a falling cherry blossom pattern and then on the outsides of both shoes, you went with these various samurai figures. And then on the insides of both shoes, you went with a couple different temples, but I also love how you photoshopped the entire background to kind of look like the inside of a Japanese temple. And then I really dig this custom box that you made also. So this is a really cool pair, but something that I do think could really help these is when you have a pattern like this cherry blossom uh, falling pattern that's taking over the entire upper and then you decide to incorporate, you know, some different silhouettes or some different characters. One thing that you want to make sure to try and do within your design is find a way for your characters or your silhouettes to really interact with your background just to avoid it ever looking like you sort of just slapped a sticker on top. So for example on these, if we took a look at the outside of the right shoe where you have the silhouette of the samurai, if you maybe would have had some of the cherry blossoms swirling around that character, then now all of a sudden your background and your foreground, your characters in the foreground, now they're interacting so much better together and it makes a much more cohesive design. But overall, you did a great job here. This is a really cool pair of Nike Blazers. We definitely don't see enough custom work on Nike Blazers. This is a great silhouette to work on. Next up, we have a pair of Timberland boots from 3T Customs representing his Vietnamese roots. Starting off right away with the left shoe, this design is meant to represent the rice paddy fields of Vietnam. And if we take a look at some of the references images you can see this very beautiful terrain which is all for rice harvesting. Then I love that you also incorporated a farmer actually bending over to cut the rice plants along with a water buffalo in the background. Now moving on to the right shoe which represents the waters of Ha Long Bay and you can see all of these beautiful limestone karst and islands that emerge from the water and I love the pattern that you picked for your water background. And then the upper back tab it says represents banana leaf texture which is one of the leaves that are widely used in Vietnam to wrap many different types of popular foods. So I love that you found different ways to incorporate different aspects of Vietnamese culture into these not just landmarks but also just its rich culture and this is this is not just another pair of custom sneakers as you can tell this is quite literally almost like a mural on your feet and these are so beautiful man now moving on to the insides of both shoes here's one of the best design choices that you'll see all day today you wanted to incorporate some of Vietnam's troubled past through some unique imagery and you wanted to incorporate different aspects of the war and since you have this incredibly bold and loud colorful pair doing these images in black and white was such a amazing choice and I love how it turned out on one of the shoes you have the two children that were recruited into the war and then on the other shoe you have the entire boat full of soldiers but I love this black and white imagery and it definitely stands out amongst these really colorful loud backgrounds and then the last little detail for these is you incorporated the old Vietnamese flag on the hang tags of this pair. Kevin also does a really great job of telling a story through his caption, so I definitely recommend going and checking him out on Instagram. Kevin, this is a pair that you should truly be proud of, man. This is an amazing piece, buddy. 
Next up, we have one AJ Custom Creations with a pair of Air Force One mids inspired by traditional Chinese opera. And right away, these characters definitely stand out that you would find in traditional Chinese opera. I see that you have sort of the rough, mighty male looking figure listed as what is called the Jing character in Chinese opera. And then the other one, the kind of more beautiful woman is called the Zhao Sheng. And the detail that you were able to pack into both of these is absolutely amazing. I love how these came out. Something else that I love about just traditional Chinese culture and artwork is all of those intricate patterns and I love that you weaved in some of those on that panel that wraps around the toe box. That looks great. One thing that I do think would have been an upgrade here, something that this pair deserves, is an upgrade in the lace department. A couple of traditional Chinese symbols can be found on the inside of both shoes while you continued that same color palette of black, gray, and red throughout. Overall, just a great job here. I'm definitely a big fan of these. Now we have a pair from Aknak Hu utilizing an Air Force One High to represent African heritage. The upper of these features a yellow to red gradient. You did that extremely cleanly and then incorporated some of the tribal patterns into your background by airbrushing those in. Then on the outsides of both shoes, you went with kind of like this cool multi-layer stencil type look um, with some black and gray imagery. The right shoe features a very large elephant. And then on the left shoe, you have Martin Luther King along with a butterfly. Then for another tie into the Martin Luther King on the inside of the shoes, you have Dream written out in like this really cool graffiti effect. I really dig these rope laces on these. Potentially my favorite part for this pair might be these toe boxes where you have this really cool abstract imagery. I'm not sure if this is maybe from a famous painting or something like that, but it fits perfectly onto these toe boxes. And then the dyed soles was another great touch. So overall, this is just a really clean pair. Great job here. Now we have a pair from Atomic Artistry CC dubbed the African Royalty Blazers. And truth be told, I don't even know where to begin with these. I mean, this is an amazing pair. I guess first off, we have to talk about how intricate and detailed those background patterns are. And this color palette is absolutely amazing. Oh boy, this is a great pair. I mean, those patterns are super intricate and I love that you made the decision since those patterns are so detailed. For all of your other panels, you went with just a solid color within your color palette and that works great. But your use of metallics on these is absolutely perfect. Take a look at the eyelet panel, how you just did the piping in metallic and that looks phenomenal. But I love your character work, how you went with this multi-layer stencil effect and you weren't afraid to pack in the dark colors. You weren't afraid to pack in your black just so that they'll really stand out from the background. So uh, on the outside of the left shoes, you have these African royalty characters. And then on the outside of the right shoes, you have uh, these two different lions. And boy, did they turn out great. I mean, this is, this is just a really classy pair. I love the lace selection here, how you went with this very thin rope. But boy, oh boy, this is just, this is a great pair from top to bottom. And I love everything about these. So great job, Atomic Artistry. Next up, we have a pair from Big KR Carter who utilized a thrifted Air Force One. You could hardly tell, they look great. Uh, but the design for these comes from the traditional wedding garb of the Zulu people in South Africa. The swooshes are actually cowhide painted to look like cheetah print and the toe box is made from a springbok hide that was actually ordered from Turkey. And this is the same animal used for the headbands that are worn in traditional Zulu weddings. So this is a super colorful pair and you found a way to incorporate even more color within some of these patterns that are on your tongue tag and your back tab. And then I also love how you did these laces, whereas this was an all white pair of laces, I'm assuming that you dyed uh, different colors at different lengths so that they aligned better within the different panels of the design. This is a really, really colorful pair. You went and even added the different color stitching onto the midsole. So really cool, unique job on these. I don't think I've ever seen Springbok incorporated uh, onto a pair of shoes. So a little bit of painting, a little bit of attaching some different materials. Really cool job here, man. Next up, we have a pair from CA Custom Footwear who took these van skate highs and decked them out in this Egyptian culture theme. And right away, I just gotta commend you for how long this must have taken to do this hieroglyphics pattern throughout the entire upper. I mean, that is so much 
little detail packed into all of those little characters. And um, then you have some traditional Egyptian eagles featured throughout on the insides of the shoes. On the outsides of the shoes, you want with kind of like this painterly feel of some of the imagery where you have the pyramids in the background. Then for those back heel tabs, you went with the King Tut look on one of them. And uh, speaking on that, I think that it would have been kind of cool for these to incorporate a little bit more gold maybe, rather than keeping, you know, your toe boxes, your tongue, your laces, your sock liner all white. Maybe if those were done in gold, that could have been something to really sort of elevate this design. But overall, again, just I got to commend you for how long these must have taken to incorporate all of this little detail. So great job here, CA Custom Footwear. Next up, we have a pair from CC Kicks 45 who used these Nike Court Visions and incorporated all of this beautiful Polynesian imagery. So this was an all black shoe. You went ahead and started to mask off some panels as we can see from your process video, laid down some white and then did this gradient of green, yellow, red that came out super smoothly and then went back in with black and did all of this super detailed imagery and that came out very cleanly on these. This is a pair that definitely, definitely deserves a much better photo set so you can really show off these details and a pair that you should be very proud of. So great job here, Courtney. Next up, we have a pair from Caesar who took these all white dunks and then gave them the off-white treatment. The shimmery green and gold accents were inspired by Presidente Beer Bottles, a brand native to the Dominican Republic, and the frayed secondary lace was inspired by rope used in tambora drums to keep it secure and add tension. Now, something that I do think was very clever about these is we've all become very familiar with the off-white dunks, how they, you know, sort of utilize that secondary lace. But rather than just doing an off-white design for the sake of doing an off-white design that we know people love, you still found a way to really incorporate that secondary lace, which wasn't already there on your pair, into your Dominican culture. So I love how you thought that out. That was very clever. And that shimmery green does look very good here. And then uh, in a couple spots throughout, you also went ahead and tried to give sort of like a carved in wood type look, sort of like a, a, a roughed up wooden drum. So this is a really cool pair and something that I think uh, once you sort of know a little bit more about what it's tying into, I'm, I'm a really big fan of these. So great job, Caesar. Now we have a pair of Air Force Ones from Customs by G representing her Italian heritage and highlighting her favorite city, Venice, and the Venetian Mask Festival. This is an annual event held in St. Mark's Square that attracts thousands of tourists. And if you just take a look at these masks, I mean, how beautiful did these turn out? You're not gonna find many better than Gina from Customs by G at painting realism or painting portraits. So when it comes to packing the detail into these masks, I mean, this is absolutely amazing. The more you zoom in, the better it gets. And I mean, just take a look at that color purple for the background. What a great color choice so that all of these masks would really stand out. And these leather laces that also match the background, just a great job here. I believe the winged lions found on the insides of the shoes are also another iconic statue that can be found in St. Mark's Square. But we have to get back to talking about these masks. I mean, these are just painted so beautifully. You really feel like you can reach out and touch these masks. I mean, the colors of them are amazing. They're so mysterious looking. I would love to attend this festival and see hundreds or thousands of people wearing these. So uh, the way that you blend colors together I mean, there's just not many better. So another great job here, Gina from Customs by G. Next up, we have a pair from De Silva Custom Kicks who's actually utilizing bowling shoes. There is definitely not enough custom bowling shoes out there. So it's always cool to see a different type of silhouette like this. But these are inspired by his homeland of Mauritius Island and these definitely nail the tropical vibes. The color blocking is super bold and vibrant. Uh, some of the different panels feature a floral pattern throughout along with some abstract line work and then a couple different gradients along with like a sunset type look some silhouettes of some palm trees and some birds love how these turned out always cool to see a very unique silhouette like this you totally nailed the tropical vibe so great job here De Silva custom kicks next up we have day one customs with a pair of jordan ones representing the comanche tribe this has to be one of the most colorful pairs that we'll be featuring today and this is one of those where I don't even know uh, what to begin with, but let's go ahead and start with these portraits on the outsides of both shoes. I love that these basically have like a watercolor type look, something very unique and 
since you're not doing them just in, you know, a traditional realism type look or in a black and gray, you always need to find a way to make sure that your portrait or character work is going to stand out from the background so you have just this splash of color right behind them. And that's what really adds to just the overall colorful feel for these. And just moving into some of the other panels, it looks like you did the toe boxes. Uh, painted to represent the cracking of the red clay as the harsh Texas sun beats down on it during the summer. And then uh, near where the eyelets are, you have these wheatgrass panels. Those are painted to perfection. And I love how those panels almost bleed right into those yellow panels. You know, some of that wheatgrass, it almost looks like it's blowing right onto the yellow panels where it's kind of like a, it kind of has like a filigree type look, but it also has this look of that wheatgrass just blowing right onto it. I mean, the execution of that is is top notch stuff. And uh, I love how you just incorporated the, the flag colors throughout that red, yellow, and blue. And um, wow, I mean, these are just, how cool is it that these started off as an all white shoe? I mean, shoe artists nowadays, are so incredible. You guys are absolutely crushing it. I love the dyed soles on these. That was a great touch. I mean, this is just, this is top notch stuff. Really great job here, Day One Customs. I'm just enamored with how these turned out and how colorful these are. I mean, this is a true work of art. Great job here. Next up, we have Don Rush Jr. with a pair of Jordan 3s dubbed the Ofrendas. And I absolutely love your photo setup here all of the Day of the Dead vibes, and Jordan 3s are usually incredibly simple, but I love how you incorporated all of these very intricate patterns. Your color palette is so spot on. I love your lace choice here, that's a great touch. And I love what you did with the Jordan symbol on the tongues of these. I think there's been a few pairs of Jordans over the years, maybe like the Jordan 8 tongue tags, where we've seen that symbol, you know, incorporated into some type of circular logo. So I love how you did that here. Tons of great dot work can also be found on the back tabs and the upper heel panel. But again, I just gotta commend you for going all out for how you really set up these photos to really help enhance the theme. Great job here, buddy. Now we have DT Lewis Customs with a pair of Jordan 1s that he's calling Pharaoh's Treasure inspired by Egyptian heritage. And right away, you could tell somebody really knows their way around an airbrush. I love that on the panels that you decided to incorporate the hieroglyphics, there's a little bit of a vignette around them. And then your use of metallics is so spot on here. You have these all black panels, but the piping around them is done in gold. The gold laces, the golden black stripes on the toe box and that upper heel panel. And take a look at that Wings logo done in gold. That is not easy to pull off. So this is a really clean pair. The gold stitching, that black background to really just make sure that gold and those hieroglyphics airbrush panels stand out. Great job here. I also see that you mentioned this is within your top three favorite customs that you've done now. It's so cool to hear that, to hear that something that you made for a contest that we're putting out, you know, just really helped you push your creativity and it helped you end up with something that you're really proud of. That is definitely one of my favorite parts about these, hearing that something that people made specifically for a contest, not for a client or anything, that that really made them, you know, push their boundaries and, you know, challenge their creativity. I love to hear that. So great job here, DT Lewis Customs. Next up, we have Fat Cap Customs with a pair of Native American themed Air Force Ones. And right away, can we just marvel at how beautiful this color palette is? I love this Native American pattern that's on the toe box, but overall, just the color palette of these is so beautiful. I remember Nike ID used to feature Air Force Ones and you could do a similar Native American pattern on some of the panels. So this totally reminds me of that, but I love how these turned out. On the back tabs, we have some additional details like the star from the Cherokee flag and the CWY is actually how you write Cherokee in the Cherokee language. So the back tabs was the perfect placement for these little details to really help tie this theme together. Next up, we have Fisher Custom Kicks with a pair of Van Skate Highs done in a Dia de los Muertos theme. So on the outside of the left shoe, you went ahead and added in the Sugar Skull wearing the sombrero up against this blue background in which you also included a line work pattern. And then for the outside of the right shoe, we have the Dia de los Muertos text along with the cool airbrush pattern. So traditionally though, when you think of the Day of the Dead sort of imagery, it's super bold, super colorful, super vibrant. 
it. So I think that rather than keeping some of these panels that's stock white, like your toe box or your tongue, or even the laces or sock liner, I think that those could have been an opportunity for you to incorporate just a little bit more color into these. But the fact that you did this a Dia de los Muertos text completely by hand without a vinyl cutter, you just traced out the text and cut that out by hand, that is not easy to do at all. So I definitely gotta commend you there for that. Next up, we have Freshkick70, who's paying homage to his Mexican-American roots on this pair of Jordans. And also being from California, I like how you found a way to incorporate that in. Also, on the outsides of the shoes, we have that California bear along with the American flag inside and the silhouette of the bird from the Mexican flag inside of the American flag, along with the three colors from the Mexican flag. That's a great little touch there, along with the Aztec sunstone right there on the toe box, nice and large. That is perfect placement for where you decided to put that. Looks like a little bit of metallic paint was also used on the upper of these rather than just sticking with the all flat black. I do think that swapping out the laces, even for something as simple as red, which is gonna be in both your American and your Mexican flag, could have been a nice touch here, but overall a really clean and simple job on these. Next up, we have GQ Customs with a pair of Puerto Rican Air Force One highs. And right away, there is a lot to marvel at on these. Let's start off with the outside of the left shoe where you have what I believe is a part of Old San Juan. They're very well known for their incredibly colorful, beautiful buildings. I love that imagery. And then on the swoosh, you go ahead and add the three stripes from the Puerto Rican flag, but then for your panel that wraps around the toe box, you divvy it up into all of these little parts just so that you can add all of this really iconic Puerto Rican imagery. You do a combination of airbrushing and hand painting, tons of little detail work. This is a really phenomenal pair. I see a ton of little symbols like the sun, the snail, the coqui. On the outside of the right shoes, you also have uh, an actual painting of the coqui along with um, what I believe is a fortress that is on the shore of San Juan. Then you have a big image of Roberto Clemente on the insides along with the, the colorway from the Pittsburgh Pirates, that black and yellow. I mean, there is just so much to really dive into for these. I also, I just really enjoy how you found a way to incorporate so many little things into just a really well put together design. It almost reminds me a little bit of the uh, Nike SB Paris's, how you know they take that Bernard Buffett artwork and just split it up into all of these little paintings. And the way that you split up that front, that panel that wraps around the toe box definitely has a similar feel to those. And usually I would try to say that, you know, you might've left a little bit too much white into this design. And maybe you could have done something with your panel right behind the swoosh or your toe box or your tongue or your eyelet panel. But I think it works well for these for how much color and detail you packed into everywhere else. I do think that it has a nice balance. I really like the laces too, how they have just a little bit of a hit of gold, but overall, really great job here. Now we have Hawk and Hatchet representing Japanese heritage with a pair of Pokemon Air Force on mids. And this pair is specifically based around Venusaur. This is a really cool graphic take on the character rather than going with a large scale portrait. And I always like when you could pull a lot of the different aspects or qualities of a character and find a way to format them onto a shoe in which you could still tell exactly who it is without that large scale portrait. So for example, on these, you have a bunch of panels dedicated to Venusaur's blue bumpy skin, and then your toe box and quarter panels have this really cool leaf texture. But what's probably my favorite part about these when we take a look from the back, how you have the back tap representing that huge flower that's blossoming on top of Venusaur, and then that little strap below it, that vertical strap, resembles the little trunk in which that flower is blossoming from. So that was a great touch. I think when I take a look at the rest of the shoe and I see that white tongue and that white sock liner, I do think that that could have carried over some of that pink, whether you want to continue representing that huge flower that's on top of Venusaur or even representing his tongue in his mouth. But switching up that white right here, I do think would have been a nice little touch. The laces look really cool here. Overall, this is a really clean job. Great job, Ryland. Next up, we have Irma Zauber with a pair of Jordan 1s that pays homage to reggae culture and the iconic Bob Marley. We have one of his most famous songs, No Woman, No Cry, featured along with the marijuana leaf on the toe box. And then of course you have to incorporate that red, yellow, and green. And I like that rather than just going with solid panels, you did this sort of cool dripping pattern on them. So overall, really clean job here. Next up, we have Zhao Customs with a pair of Japanese Heritage Air Force Ones. And right away, I dig these really large scale paintings 
that you did on both of the shoes. So on the outside of the left shoe, you have this huge samurai, and I really dig the subtle touch or the subtle effect of incorporating that haze or that smoke into your character and getting it to sort of integrate with the background. That is a great job. And then on the other shoe, you have the koi fish, and just the way that you sort of place and size your paintings is, is really well done. The way that the koi fish just sort of goes right under that panel, that eyelet panel, is perfect placement. So great job with that. And then you have the rising sun flag on the toe boxes of both shoes, along with a little bit of a vignette, just to sort of tie it back into those other black panels. Nice touch there. Custom insoles, custom box, great overall packaging, and great overall job here. Now we have Javi Customs with a pair of Adidas representing his Mexican heritage, and these have such a beautiful painterly feel to them. I love that you incorporated the blanket into the background along with the tequila bottles. And uh, I see that you mentioned you grew up in a little town near Jalisco where all of the tequila is actually made. So incorporating those tequila fields on the insides of the shoes, great little touch. Brown and proud on the insides of the other shoes along with some really high level airbrushing tricks. And speaking of high level airbrushing, if we take a look at the outside of the left shoes, where you have this Chicano style car, the way that you weave that Mexican flag right into the background there is absolutely seamless and really high level stuff. And if we take a look at the other shoe where you have the cowboy along with the sunset background, I mean, this really looks like a painting and this is absolutely the perfect silhouette to try and pull something like this off. So really great job here, Javi Customs. Next up, we have Joan's Customs with a pair of Air Force Ones representing both Mexico and Brazil. On the green portion of the Brazil pair, I really dig that subtle floral pattern that you did. And then you also have the silhouette of that iconic Christ statue in Rio de Janeiro. Then on the inside of the Brazil shoes, I love the five stars representing the five World Cups that Brazil has won. I still think that they should have brought it home in 06 when they had Prime Ronaldinho, Prime Kaká. That was a team that I was definitely rooting for, I remember back then. Now moving on to the Mexico shoes, you did some super intricate pattern work on all of the red panels. That came out really clean. And then you have the Echo and Mexico bird in the back, along with a really cool tribal look bird on the toe box. Overall, great job on these. So something that I like to think about anytime I'm doing a mismatched design like this, is there anything that I can do within my own design that will help tie the two designs in together a little bit better, even if they don't have any coordinating colors or anything like that. So let's take a look at the swooshes, for example, along with the back tab, how you basically left those as all white. What type of design, what type of color work, what can I do in these areas to help tie my designs in together a little bit better? So let's say for example, you went ahead and colored in these swooshes along with the back tabs in an all gold on both shoes. Now, even though gold isn't necessarily a part of either of the flags, main colors or anything like that, gold is still something that I think would really help tie the designs together a little bit better to work together as a pair rather than two separate things. So this is something always to at least play around with anytime you're doing a complete mismatch. Is there anything that I can do personally within my design that might not be already incorporated into my colors or into my themes that will just help these two very separate things start to feel like more of a cohesive pair. Definitely something to just think about and play around with, you know, different colors, different designs, different patterns. What can I do to make two very mismatched things start to feel more cohesive? Next up, we have Kia Kodama with a pair of Air Force Ones that are paying homage to the black hair and beauty industry. And she's calling these the Hair Force Ones, which as you can tell, are a perfectly fitting name for what is easily one of the most unique, dope custom sneakers that I have seen in a long time. The entire upper of these features braided hair throughout. And I love that it doesn't just sit cleanly on the panels, it overlaps onto the midsoles. And then take a look at these swooshes made out of bamboo earrings. That is so dope. And then there's some baby hairs featured near the eyelets. Overall, these are just an absolutely incredible pair. There's also been quite a few great articles written about Kia and her work on these by some really big sites like Hype Bay and Essence. So I definitely recommend going and giving those a read. But overall, this is such a unique work of art. You truly did an incredible job here, Kia. Next up, we have Kiatu Customs with a pair of Nike Dunk Highs representing Japanese hair heritage. 
These were based off of ancient Japanese screen paintings and the entire upper has this old parchment look to it. And you totally nailed that here. I mean, this looks like it could potentially be a Nike release. This looks like a shoe that I wanna go buy right now. You totally nailed that aged look to these along with dyeing the midsole absolute perfection and what i really love about your artwork rather than just going in uh, where you do all of your silhouettes of the mount fuji rather than just going in with pure black or pure dark brown or dark gray you still have this aged effect even to the paintings so you t just totally nailed so many different aspects about these and i i totally love the very subtle red that's incorporated just a little bit of splash of color I mean, this is just such a dope pair overall. Next up, we have Laylee Custom Shoes with a pair of Air Maxes representing her French heritage. You have this very cool Renaissance period pattern featured on the mudguard and on the tongues. That looks really cool. And this killer colorway of Bordeaux along with this blue king's crown on that upper back heel love that a little bit of recon work also incorporated into these as you swapped out the old swishes for some new ones and it's always really cool to see a combination of not only painting work but also a little bit of recon work thrown in so really clean job here Laylee custom shoes next up we have lamic custom foot gear representing the african-american culture with the tribe of judah air force ones there is so much great stuff to talk about with these we have these beautiful paintings of an african woman on on the outside of the right shoe on the outside of the left shoe you have a tribal warrior with a lion alongside him the color palette for these is absolutely amazing you have this super detailed pattern in the background looks great a little bit of landscape type silhouette along that mudguard and then these really cool mask on the toe boxes love that i love the african flowers on the insides of the shoes those really thin rope laces this is a top-notch pair. I do think that maybe the sock liner could have been that pink color or even that light green. Either one of those I think would have been a nice touch rather than white. But overall, this is some really high-level execution from how you laid out this design to how you nailed all of these colors. You made sure that your, you know, your main subjects, your main characters totally stand out from the background. You incorporated an incredibly detailed pattern in here. This is a really great pair. Good stuff, Lamic Custom Foot Gear. Next up, we have Lobel B with a pair of Reeboks inspired by the Book of Hours, which is a Christian devotional book popular in the Middle Ages. And there's some really detailed imagery from this book that you very nicely incorporated onto these various panels of this pair of Reeboks. One thing that I think could have been cool here is taking this all white shoe and trying to make it look like it has an aged book feel. So rather than still being a clean all white, if you could make this look like aged paper and then put this detail imagery on top, that could have been very cool for these. But nonetheless, still overall a really clean job here. Next up, we have Loud Sneakers, who says she was a teenager in the 80s, so she considers that a part of her heritage. We'll let that slide for this. Overall, this pair definitely transports you right back into that era. Huge I love the 80s sign on the outside of one of the shoes. The cheetah patterns on the toe box, just the overall color palette, the incorporation of the stars and the glitter. This is a very, very cool 80s pair. I'm definitely getting some Save by the Bell vibes for these. So overall, Great job, Loud Sneakers. Next up, we have Maros Brand, who unfortunately wasn't able to complete their submission, but these are still something to marvel at. If we take a look at some of these process videos, this is just top to bottom classwork. The airbrushing, the detailing, this video is really cool to watch too. And overall, this is a pair that I definitely would have loved to have seen been completed because these definitely could have gone far in this competition. But nonetheless, with what you were able to complete, really great job, Maros Brand. Next up, we have a pair from MCS Design 6 representing Spanish culture. Now this pair is heavily inspired by some huge Spanish icons like Picasso. We have some of his paintings featured on the outsides of the right shoes and then a famous architect, Antonio Gaudi, you could see some of his work on the insides of the right shoes. She's also incorporated in some of the writings of the famous Miguel de Cervantes and also incorporated is a little bit of wine and oil, two staples within Spanish food culture. This is a really cool pair here that you found a way to incorporate a ton of different aspects of Spanish culture within. Next up, we have Myra's Customs with a Mexican themed pair of Jordan 1s. And you also mentioned that your grandfather 
was a professional painter in Mexico and you're glad to be honoring his legacy. So that is super cool to see. But starting off with these on the left shoe, we have the Mexican flag near the rear. And I do think that the stripes of the flag should have been carried all the way to the midsole. But I also love that texture that you've incorporated into the background. And then just moving on to some of your other paintings, you have the Frida Kahlo painting, the Aztec warrior, the Pancho Villa. There is just a lot to like about these. The Jaguar on the toe box. This is a really dope pair overall and a ton of detail went into these. So really great job, Myra's Customs. And I know that your grandfather would be proud of you for these. Next up, we have Nunez Customs with a pair of Mexican themed vans. Overall, this is a very simple and clean pair where you have these women with the sugar skulls painted onto their faces. I do think that if you incorporated some of that imagery from the sugar skulls, maybe some of the line work or some of the patterns or even some of those vibrant colors into your background or into any of those other panels of the vans, I do think that that could have elevated this theme. But just as far as what you did do, really great job for adding this painterly feel to a painted face that's kind of meta if you think about it. But you totally nailed that look. So overall, great job here. Next up, we have Panda Customs with a Day of the Dead themed pair of Air Force Ones. Two beautiful paintings of these different sugar skulls are featured on the outsides of both shoes. The male sugar skull who's wearing the large sombrero, the way that it just fades off into black is absolutely perfect. And then for the beautiful woman, the way that you painted her so elegantly, love how that turned out, along with that little skull right behind her that's just fading off into the distance. I like that you also incorporated some of the very colorful Day of the Dead flags right along the toe box and the lace selection that you did, those super vibrant colors, great way to tie everything together. Now we have Royalty Custom sneakers with a pair of Converse Lowe's representing his Indian and Australian heritage. So you have the two different flags on the outsides of both shoes and then on the insides of the shoes, you have some of the iconic landmarks and iconic imagery, the Sydney Opera House, the Koala Bear, the Kangaroo for the Australia side. And then for the India side, you have the Taj Mahal, the elephants. And now it's just all about finding a way to tie all of these little icons in together through some type of cohesive background, something that's going to take these from just these little icons up against a white background into a really cool custom sneaker design. Now it's just about finding that and that's what's really going to take your work to the next level. I've been recording for about five hours at this point and every time I open up a new entry I'm still absolutely blown away by how talented you guys are and how much work you put into this competition. I can't say thank you guys enough. I'm sure I'll say all of this at the outro of the video, but you guys totally crushed this one. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Next up, we have School Your Shoes with a pair of Vans Old School Lows that actually are representing the heritage of her future grandchildren. So her daughter is of European descent and her fiance is of a Mexican heritage. So starting off with the European shoe, there is an Irish tartan on the toe box, a German cross stitch on the outside and a Nordic snowflake sweater pattern on the inside. The teapot and roses are my mother's from her favorite English china maker, Royal Albert. Now moving on to the Mexican shoe, which has a colorful serape, now moving on to the Mexican shoe, which has a colorful serape on the toe box and the sides are decorated in traditional Mexican embroidery, which is commonly found in Mexican style women's dresses and blouses. And also included on that toe box is an iconic sugar skull. And then on the back heels, the way that you incorporated their two different last names, love how that turned out. Overall, the more you look at these, the more you can really appreciate the balance and the symmetry of these two very distinct and different designs. For example, if we just take a look at the toe boxes, the way in which you decided that's where you're gonna place some of your really important symbols, the sugar skull on one versus the teapot on the other, the placement for the different embroidery patterns on the outsides of both shoes, absolutely perfect. The different colors that you selected for, you know, that van stripe versus the eyelet panels, the way that those seamlessly bleed right into the rest of the design, perfect color choices there. But overall, this is just such a well thought out design and a perfect example of how you can take two very distinct different designs and still find a way to seamlessly blend them in together to create one really cohesive pair. Now we have Scribblin Customs with the pair of Jordan 1s representing his Irish hair. Heritage. These feature a Celtic knot pattern throughout some of the panels of the upper, along with a four leaf clover design right behind those Nike swooshes. I love your use of gold within this design.
design from the way that it outlines some of the black panels to the laces to the sock liner really great choice there and then the toe boxes of these actually feature a soldier by the name of Michael Collins who was a founder of the Irish Free State and helped secure Irish independence from Great Britain back in the 1920s really great color blocking here I love how you split everything up it was definitely a great idea to not do that Celtic knot pattern everywhere throughout the entire upper so the way that you still incorporated some solid black panels really great choice this is just a really clean design overall great job scribbling next up we have sneakers by Bedell representing his Greek heritage and drawing inspiration from classic Greek mythology but right away we have to talk about this snakeskin pattern I really feel like I could reach out and touch it on this pair top-notch stuff how you totally nailed that texture I love these snakes how you have them weaving in and out of in front of behind those Nike swooshes and then the Medusa eyes on the toe box perfect placement for those this concrete texture that you have on those eyelet panels and on the back tab great job with that I do think that this chunky white midsole could have just been broken up a little bit more by adding in some contrast stitching if you would have colored that stitching maybe some of that light green that you have on that Nike swoosh or the gray from the concrete I do think that that could have broken it up a little bit sometimes the chunky white midsoles of an Air Force One just can make it feel so blocky so if you sort of split it up a little bit by adding a little bit of color into that stitching that can really help but overall this is such a dope pair and I I'm just amazed by that snakeskin texture even from afar it looks so good and the closer you get the more you really feel like you could reach out and touch it so great job here Matthew next up we have solo one customs with a pair of Nike Hibaro Air Force One highs representing his Puerto Rican heritage the shoe helps represent some of the most popular sports in Puerto Rico such as baseball alongside this image of Roberto Clemente and then the hang tag for the shoe is a pair of boxing gloves since boxing is also incredibly popular in Puerto Rico. The sugarcane fields represent his family's history of farming along with the rooster that was a part of his wife's grandmother's land who never stopped crowing. I love some of these diano patterns that you featured throughout along with the super colorful mask and then how you removed the Nike swoosh and replaced it with this blade that says Puerto Rico. That was a great touch also. Tons and tons of great detail packed into these overall really great job Solo One Customs. Next up we have Sonoran Soul with a pair of Jordan 5 golf shoes done in a southwestern theme. Right away we gotta take a look at the pattern work on these and it is totally top notch stuff. If Nike ID were to ever release Jordan 5 golf shoes along with some funky patterns, this totally seems like something you would see on there. I would love to wear a pair like this, but your pattern work here, top notch stuff, not easy to do, especially when we're talking about that mudguard panel, the way that it wraps and you're dealing with those straight lines, that's not easy to do. So gotta commend you for that. Great job on these Sonoran Soul. Next up, we have Taz Customs with a pair of Air Force Ones dubbed the Delft's Blau which is a 16th century painting style used in the Dutch town of Delft on all kinds of pottery and tiles. The windmill and peacock are also typical elements and they started doing this as a cheaper alternative to Chinese porcelain. I also see that you mentioned these are 100% hand painted, absolutely no stencils were used and took around 24 hours to complete. I can't even imagine how cross-eyed you'd probably went after painting all of these little details in. I think that it was a great touch to do this piping effect around some of the panels just to break them up a little bit from all of this really intricate detail line work. That dark blue just helps give them a little bit of breathing room and then you also have some handmade tongue tags with the deer antlers on them. Overall just such an exquisite pair. Really great job here Taz Customs. Next up we have the Tinted Knuckle with a pair of Air Force Ones representing his Singaporean heritage. The Tinted Knuckle actually did an incredible write up on their Instagram of all of the details that they incorporated into this pair and they go into so much more detail than I ever possibly could but just some of the things that they mention on the outside of the left shoe that is actually what is known as the Pacha a noble heroic male character identifiable by his signature green face painting and then on the insides of the shoes we have the Dewey Ratty which is the goddess of love and beauty in Javanese folklore then on the toe boxes and the back heels we have batik and mandala motifs now moving on to our right shoe we have the Zong Ki character which is a Chinese deity and very popular 
popular within Chinese opera. On the other side, a Nan Shi, which is a southern lion, is featured. Alongside the opera mask and lion head are motifs of peony and clouds featured throughout the rest of the upper of these. Overall, this is a pair that I am just absolutely blown away by. You packed so much amazing detail into these paintings of these various masks. And no part of this shoe did you take it easy on yourself. All of the little details of these tiny little motifs that you featured throughout, just really cool and super fascinating to read your entire write-up on what this shoe means to you and all of these little different things that help represent your culture. This is an amazing piece and something that you should be so proud of. Very cool to see and thank you for sharing these with the world. Next up we have Top Customs with a pair of Air Force Ones done in a Year of the Dragon theme. So we have that dragon silhouette featured right behind the Nike swoosh and he's breathing fire right onto that panel that wraps around the rest of the toe box. Dyed the midsoles to match that age effect that you went for on the rest of the upper. I think that you could have incorporated a little bit more color into something like maybe the laces or the toe box, the tongues or the sock liner, rather than just keeping those all white. I don't think that the white necessarily enhances the design, and that's something that you always want to at least consider, but overall you were going for a very clean and simple job here, and you definitely nailed that. So great job, Top Customs. Next up, we have Uncommon.etc with a pair of Nike D-Brakes representing the Comanche Nation. The overall goal for these was to create a shoe that could look like it would be a running moccasin, so that's a really cool concept. But one of the coolest things that you'll see today is this hand-painted bead pattern that would have been used used on the bracelets worn by the Comanche Nation. The various shades of brown that you picked for these other panels of the upper totally match alongside that cork panel on that back heel. The brown leather laces were another great touch along with the arrowhead used as an aglet on those laces. The trail of tears symbol that you featured on the toe box looks great. Perfect placement for that and another great feature of these has to be how you swapped out the Nike swoosh for a water bird wing in which you also incorporated even more of that beadwork and that happens to be the same colors that's used in the Comanche flag. So overall, this is just an immaculate job. Really great job here, Uncommon. Next up, we have a pair of Jordan 1s from Urban Prototypes done in an African heritage theme. The shoe is mostly Zulu-based with leopard and tribal patterns featured throughout. The purple and gold is used to symbolize royalty, and the sock liner represents the blood of my heritage. The outsides of both shoes feature some beautiful paintings. One of them has a couple of black panthers, while the other features the fertility goddess Maba Moana Waressa of the Zulu people in Southern Africa. And I love the way in which you decided to depict these through this really dark color palette. All of these really dark blues, dark grays, dark blacks work so well alongside these purples that you have in the background, but the rest of your shoe has this much warmer color palette, so all of these blues and purples really stand out against it. Overall, this is such an exceptional pair from the paintings to the patterns to the layout to the color palette, the way that you tied everything in together. Such a great job, Urban Prototypes. Now we have Zap Zarap Customs with a pair of Air Force Ones, and these come alongside a rather unique message that I think I should read directly from him. So when I heard about De Jesus Custom Footwear Heritage Contest, I first thought of great musicians, athletes, or maybe even the legacy of an entire country. But somehow I wasn't really satisfied with any idea. The idea that I have brought to life has occupied me for a number of years and will probably continue to do so for a few more years. Every minute the size of 30 soccer pitches is cut down and almost 12,000 tons of plastic waste end up in the ocean every year. Therefore, an inevitable question arises for me. What will our heritage be? So he painted an entire pair and came up with a design around trying to save the environment. I really dig the painted imagery of the endangered elephants along with the entire shoe depicting the ocean. Obviously, this is a design and a message that really means a lot to you, so that's always gonna make it that much more special. These also come with a really cool custom box, and overall, I just think that this is a great, strong message, so I gotta commend you for these. Next up, we have Gilberto Hernandez with a pair of Puerto Rican-themed Air Force Ones. The upper of these has a gradient featuring the Puerto Rican flag colors, and then the midsole features the many different symbols used by the Diano Indians, and then you included the Koki frog on the back tabs. And you also mentioned that this was your first ever time customizing shoes. So cool to see somebody willing to step outside their comfort zone and to try something as different as customizing shoes 
for the first time and enter a contest like this. So cool to see. Really got to commend you for that, Gilberto. Great job here, buddy. And look forward to seeing more of your work in the future. So we had a couple of entries that were submitted after the deadline. And although these can't count as official entries, I do still want to show them off here in this video. So first off, we have a pair from Kira Made This who made this pair of boots inspired by fine china in Kintsugi, which is the art of repairing broken pottery. And her theme behind these is finding beauty in the broken, which is totally fitting for a theme like this. Truth be told, there's not a whole lot I can say here. You're so much better off just enjoying all of the detail that is packed into this beautiful artwork. I mean, this is truly an immaculate pair. Great job, Kira. Now we have a pair from Ja Customs representing his Puerto Rican heritage done on a pair of Air Force Ones. On the outsides of both shoes, we have an original Vejigante mask along with the Puerto Rican flag incorporated into the design. And that really stands out up against this all black background. Then throughout the rest of the upper, you incorporated some very subtle line work that features some other iconic imagery like the Koki frog, the Diano sun, and some other tribal patterns. And I really dig the choice that you made to keep that nice and subtle here. This is also one of those pairs though that I do think just adding a smidge more of color could have really helped the overall design. Maybe that's through the color of the midsole stitching, the lace selection, sock liner color, or even on the tongue or the tongue tag, just a little bit of color elsewhere I do think could have helped these. All right, huge, huge, huge round of applause for all of our amazing participants in this contest. What a fantastic turnout this was and huge round of applause to you if you made it to this point in the video. I haven't made it to the editing yet, but I gotta imagine this is gonna be one of the longest videos we've ever put out on YouTube. So if you made it this far, I gotta say thank you for that. But man, I just feel so inspired and so just so impressed by all of the pairs that we saw today. And it was so fascinating to read all of the different stories on what these cultures and what all of this stuff actually means to you. So I'm so proud that this theme and this concept, this idea, this contest made people dig a little bit deeper than just what looks cool for a pair of custom shoes. They really found a way to weave stories into it. And I love that about this. So. Man, do I feel just motivated and inspired after doing all of this. So cool to see, and I'm really, really excited to showcase the final four pairs with you guys. I cannot wait to see how that public voting shakes out, and I have no idea which of the pairs is going to take the winning for this, but man, oh man, these contests, they get better every single time. The entries, the level of degree of difficulty for what you guys put out just always rises with every single contest. So man oh man has it been cool to see i gotta say thank you to everybody who participated one more time thank you to you the viewer for watching this video please go and show some love to all of these amazing artists that participated it's free to go and show them some love on instagram and tell them that you enjoyed their pair also let me know in the comments down below which of the pairs from today really stood out to you guys can't wait to hear some of that feedback from you but we should have our final four video of revering your customs coming within the next three or four weeks or so so make sure you come back for that one guys all right please be sure to go ahead and give this video a like if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed and everybody get out there and just create